hello there and today i would be setting up the primary backend that we have for ca microscope so let's get started the first thing that you need to do is clone the project to your local uh, system just go to this particular button you can copy the endpoint open the terminal whatever you use as default and just open the location where you want to set the project up so i have this directory for me and i would do a simple get clone and paste the endpoint over here this would copy all the contents and okay it's done now you can use any code editor that you like i would be using vs code so i would use the command code space whatever the folder name is and hit enter as soon as it's done i no longer need this terminal i can close this let's move to full screen and okay so now are the actual steps that we need to set the project up. So I'll open the default, I'll zoom up a bit. I've opened the screen screencast mode. So you can also see the keys that I'm pressing in real time. The first thing that you need to do is you need to create an environment file. To create an environment file, the default environment file obviously, you would do cp space, that is uh, the alternative for copy command dot env dot example that's the source file and here then you do dot env that's the destination file now if you notice a new file has been created based from env dot example the contents are the same and now this defines the uh, the environment that our application would be using the next part is if routes.json is not defined you might need to do a similar thing for routes.json in that case you would do routes.json.example routes.json but since I already have this file and it's already on the master branch there's no need to create it again but just in case if you want to create a new file or if made some changes you want to restore them you can use this method the second thing that we need to do while setting up the project is generate the keys so if I do ls keys it shows me a script file which is make underscore key dot sh now, if you go to the keys file, you see make underscore key dot ss, you see a, uh, a large command that we run, which is basically to create open SSL certificate. You might face uh, errors in setting up open SSL if, you do not, if you're running on Windows because it does not come pre-installed. So running this particular command manually will obviously show you the errors that are there and that can help a lot when reporting bugs or issues and can th they can also help you resolve them themselves now I'm running it on a Linux machine mine is Ubuntu and what I'll do is I'll run that file so to run that you see dot slash that's the uh, th that's a standard convention we use for any script you say keys slash make key dot sh and we see an output on the console which says generating an RSA par private key and then writing new keys to keys slash key. So we see that the keys have been created now and it's safe to close that. Notice that these two keys are ignored from the version control system. So, and because they're private uh, in nature, you do not want to share these fi files on the version control system. So we ignore this on the version control. You won't see the state changes on git. So if I do git status or git status you would see that there are no changes because uh, these files are ignored now third and the final change that you need to do I would not call it a change basically you need to install on the dependencies so either npm i or npm install both of them would do the same job and it would definitely install the dependencies that are needed for the project if you are one of the users of an alternative package management system for example yarn you can only do yarn and set the project up i personally use npm for uh, because the project uses npm i would ins i install the dependencies using npm now once that's done we have uh, uh, the dependencies installed you see a node modules folder and let's move on to the final part of the project setup in order to successfully run the backend, uh, it's important to note that the database that we are using is a MongoDB database. 
as expected you would need a mongodb instance running on your local system to do it you can either install mongodb as a service in your operating system or you can run it using docker as well i personally prefer running such things on docker the reason is that it isolates my system's environment from the application's environment and it's kind of very clean when you use docker for stuff you can just delete the container and all the things related to it automatically vanish you do not have to do things manually now there's this nice extension that we have in ubuntu that basically allows you to manage containers but i won't be using that for this demo so that you can get a basic overview of how to set things up uh, running it as simple running it is properly documented on the mongodb or the mongo uh, database docker page and you can obviously refer this whenever you want and if you're in, uh, in favor of installing it locally on a machine you can just quickly google installing mongodb on and whatever your operating system is for example i use ubuntu so i can use ubuntu if you, whatever the links come up most probably the official documentation just follow the steps and you will be able to install it but again i would recommend i would strongly recommend that you move forward with mongo now let's discuss very few basics of docker so to list all the containers that are currently running we do docker ps right so right now i have two containers running when is of redis when is of postgres that's of a site project that i was working on now you do, i do a docker ps dash a now you might not see this output you might see something very different but the gist of it is docker ps dash a also shows uh, the containers that are not currently running but are not deleted so if you stop a container it comes to this part particular location so i say docker start mongo because i had a container whose name was mongo so i did docker start and then i pass the container name i can also pass the container id and get the status to get the status and all to first of all to view the logs you do docker logs dash f mongo and then you will see all the logs that are there now this can be really helpful if you're trying to debug things but we don't need it right now so i'll close it with control d or control c all right now once i have my database running as well now it's safe to then npm run start if you're curious of how npm run starts work under the hood you would see something there's a file named as package.json in which you see different different scripts that are available for the project now when we run docker uh, npm run start we are basically running a node caracal.js right now let's terminate it the reason that you see multiple database connections and uh, multiple times uh, the same command is that we are running the project on a cluster mode since node js is single threaded which uses event loops to give a feeling of congruency things are not actually congruent to deal with that part we use a code runner and you can define the number of workers over here in the env, env file you can also specify the port that the service must use if you're using things other than this particular project at one time now all these things are documented here and also on the uh, on the github page you can also set the mongo uri the username and password can also go in here if you're using a deployed version the mongodb database name comes in here and that's all so let's do one thing let's do npm run start now you see the database is started and the database is connected and it's started to listen on localhost colon 4010 so let me bring in my browser tab and show you the output on localhost colon 4010 because we do not have any route registered on the base url you would see a 404 but just to confirm that we have things loaded let me open one of the endpoint and it says that the json web token error jwt must be provided now because many a times you want to protect our routes from unauthorized access we have authorization setup which ensures that all the users must have a jwt 
and what's a JWT? JWT basically stands for JSON Web Token. You can read about it more on the internet. So let me do one thing. Let me cancel it. And I do not want to set up a very complex authorization system on my local machine at the moment for testing. So what I'll do is, uh, this is boolean that says disable security, set truthy to disable permissions and login handlers. So if I set it to true and save it, make sure you save it and then you have to restart the server. This is very important. You need to restart the server else the change in environments will not be listed. Now we've saved it. Now let's try to open this again and we no longer see the error but we see an empty array. Now this may be because the data that we're trying to access does not exist at this particular time. So let's see if we have some more stuff. All right. So I used I used another endpoint that was data slash template dash find. Again, uh, endpoint basically to test if our database was working right or not. The actual use of it is that we use it to search the templates that we have. But anyways, this basically proves that the server is up and running and it can also assess that database. That is all you need to set up in the project from scratch on a new machine. The details of the defaults and uh, the details of the default are given here. About setting up uh, the permissions and the keys are given over here. And that is it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the maintainers or post the questions on the community Slack. That's it. Long live open source. Bye bye.